find uh, very interesting predictions. For example, this week or today, you will get the company of ordered people, or sometimes uh, you will get unexpected orders. So I think I didn't uh, read today's newspaper, but I think uh, today's astro uh, astrology might be something like that. Okay. Well, uh, my field of uh, specialization is not uh, merely history of Christianity, uh, specifically that is Syriac studies and uh, liturgical studies. Well, okay, uh, I have the uh, privilege and honor to introduce Baron Dr. Vati Longcha. Uh, I don't need to introduce him because uh, he is known to you, but not to all of you, better than me. But anyhow, in a meeting like this, it's uh, absolutely normal that we introduce uh, uh, the, the, the speaker. Uh, Dr. Longcha is the regional consultant for theological education in Southeast Asia of International Ministries of Our Baptist Church Association, APA. Uh, Wati Longcha is an ordained minister of uh, ABIM. Northeast India. He taught uh, for 15 years at the Eastern Theological College, Yorker Assam, from 2001 to 2007. Uh, sorry, from 2001 to 2007, he served as consultant of ecumenical theological education for Asia and Pacific, a joint program of the World Council of Churches and Christian Conference of Asia. From 2008 to 2015, March, he served as the Dean of Extension and uh, Demin Program of the Senate of uh, Salambo College of University, during which um, he also served as the Director in charge of the South Asia Theological Research Institute Summary for two years. From 2015 to 2019 June, he was invited to serve as Professor and uh, Director of the Asia Pacific Indigenous Research Institute of uh, Yushan Theological College in Seminary Tema. Uh, but he served as the Dean of Program uh, for Theolog uh, Theology and Culture of, uh, in, Asia, in Asia, PTCA, a theological movement uh, in doing theology uh, with uh, Asian resources. But he has authored uh, six books uh, in English, which includes uh, Returning to Other Earth and uh, Transforming Cultures and Practices. He has also edited and uh, co-edited 40 books in English. It's, we are extremely honored uh, at his presence and also we are privileged to listen to him. Okay, uh, I invite Dr. Vati Longcha to give uh, him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Diversities that can provide. 
invite us to the world. That is true. <clears throat> we don't have a theology of diversity. If we talk about diversity, we are frightened. Still, I remember when I was in Eastern Theology of College, when I said, there is many good things in the tribal theology, the tribal tradition. I was nearly kicked out from the church. By saying that there are good things in our tribal tradition, nearly time, full week for me. Almost one year I was not invited. If you say today, there are good things in Hindu scripture, there are good things in Islamic tradition, you will be torn up by your bishop, by your genesis. We scared to speak about the good things, diversities in this world. That's why we have been always talking about how to find similarities. Theological colleges are open to find similarities. With the Western perspective, This is similar. Now, this is the bound in the Christian religion, which is given by the Western missionary. Ah, this is similar. The preparation for preparation for evangelism. This is what we said. So my argument in this paper is that not similarity, but only when we discover differences, the uniqueness of differences. Only then we can contribute something new to the world. If you find try to find similarities, then you cannot do it. So this is the time that we need to have a shift from similarities to differences if you want to contribute something new. That is my theory. Okay? So in the first para. Diversity of God's creation in culture. The very beginning, God's the diversity is a structure of God's creation, and diversity, differences, reflect the image of God. We said image of God is a rational beauty. No, this is something wrong. We have come from the wrong. Diversity, differences reflect the image of God. And this is what we see in the very first affirmation of the Bible. God created heaven and earth and all the living beings. Since it is God created, it is created by God, then this diversity is what God wants. We see the character of God in the diversity. This is what I try to argue. Let me read. Uh, that's why you know, our responsibility as a theologian is to affirm the liberative cultures in tradition and at the same time challenge the oppressive elements in the culture and other things. That's why, you know, all through the Bible we have seen or we see. Prophet, Jesus, even Paul, all this, you know, I said it here, affirming diversity. Without diversity, you cannot worship God. This is what Paul was, the prophet was very clear. Paul was also very clear. Jesus was also very clear. That only in diversity, only in differences, we can worship God. This is what the uh, I try to argue in the first chapter. But I'm interested to uh, read second chapter, what Paul says. Second, uh, second page. Uh, no. Saint Paul also defended the differences as custom. He expounded on the importance of differences in the church in Galatia. Galatians were not Jews. They were followers of Christ from gender 
background. They have the rich cultural tradition. After they decided to follow Jesus, they wanted to act like Jews. They wanted to be circumcised, follow strict observances of, uh, observance of Sabbath, and practice and apply Jews' law and custom. It created conflict and misunderstanding among themselves, and also broke their relationship with their fellow brothers and sisters uh, by denying differences. It broke the fellowship who were not yet Christian. Just like the mentality of some of our Christians who think that by adopting and following Western culture, we become better Christian. We become better Christian. And those collection also thought that by observing Jewish law and practices, they would become better followers of Christ. So Paul challenged them, saying, You foolish Galatian, and very strong, who misguided you? He challenged them, raising several questions. Are you saved by law or by the Spirit or by faith or by Christ? No, he gave on challenging that. So, to help Christians recognize God's presence in all cultural tradition, Paul articulated differences by connecting the spirit and faith. Spirit and faith. In the Old Testament, spirit is compared with wind. The wind blows wherever it wills. Nobody can control over it. Even by our moderator, cannot control. Wind blows. Wind cannot make distinction between male and female, Gentile and uh, 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 Jews, Christian or non-Christian, indigenous or colonizer. No. It does not make a distinction even between human and non-human. Wind is compared with the breath of God which gives life. So all theology is that, you know, God has a spirit. Even before Abraham, he was there. So God is already there. When God is already there, who are you to say that you are useless? You cannot deny. It. This is what Paul was challenging the uh, Galatians. Faith also he connects. So let me not read it. So Paul is consistently uh, and also is writing challenge. Not to abandon differences as even. Differences is not even. Don't abandon as even. Instead, transform them into Christ Jesus and celebrate their differences to glorify God. Celebration of differences transformed in kingdom's value is what we need to offer today. This is uh, the core basis that I wanted to argue. This is what the Bible teaches. Bible never reject the differences. All through the history, we have been doing something to conquer the differences from the colonial time. Differences are seen as a threat. threat and a world to be conquered. So exactly the colonizer thought that conquering, we must conquer the whole world. Others are different. That's why Christian missionary also blessed them. Christian missionary thought that colonial role, colonialism is a blessing from God so that they evangelize, they transform, change the diversity, the differences. This is what uh, I try to argue. So the colonial process was an attack on differences. It was quite tragic. It was aggressive, forced and violently denied the celebration of diversity. The attack was both formal and informal. 
the first step was to take away the land, the territory of the boy. Even by killing, by genocide, all kinds of tactics to use to take away the prime land. That's why today, almost 70% of the world mass are occupied by a few white people. This is all. Once the land is taken away, then diversity will be gone. Because the culture is rooted on the land. This is what uh, I want to argue. And then the first thing, after taking the land and its territory, social colonialization was took place. How? Social. You are inferior. You are what you believe is deeper, demonic. This teaching was internalized until now the biggest problem of the tribal people is the only these themselves do not want to recognize that there is something good in their in their tradition and culture. The biggest problem because we have already internalized that one. When I was in Taiwan, I was very shocked how the colonial ruler, you know, undermined people who were given a name by the colonial. My students were sitting in the class. One of my friends, you know, his name is Kapi. Kapi is a, a smart, smart man, intelligent and smart person. That Kapi, the name. You know what Chinese teacher can? Change the man? He is looking. You, change the man. From that day onward, he began to me a meaning which he doesn't know. <laughs> God, name was stolen. The village name was taken away. The village name was also changed. The root name was changed. And then some of the indigenous uh, symbols were replaced by something funny things. And then if you see them speaking to your mother tongue, they were beaten up, they were fine. Some of them were even jailed. The Bible was also, you know, all the indigenous writing was collected and then put it in writing. That was the fine. Luckily, some Bible was, was hidden. They could not destroy all. This is cool. And then now, uh, with, along with the colonizer, everybody were taught that your indigenous culture, your language are inferior. They start hating. Nobody speak now. Now I saw them teaching in the, you know, after the worship service, you know, after how are you? Have you eaten food? Old people teaching. But young people do not want to learn. Uh, so much of uh, internalization within us has already you know, destroyed this language, our culture, our tradition. So differences to fight, to affirm the differences. Indigenous people themselves have to be conscientized. Uh, otherwise, their language, culture, everything will be diminished in a few years. Now, with our national, one national language at the expense of mother tongue. Home Minister Amishka said to preserve our ancient philosophy, our culture and memory of our freedom. He said there is at least one language, Hindi, that the nation knows. If Hindi is taken out of our uh, taken out of our freedom struggle, 
the entire soul of the struggle is lost. That means he denies the existence of all the non-Hindi speaking people. Only Hindi can preserve the culture. Only Hindi is the legitimate language of India. And language is the mother. It is the most important agency to preserve the diversities, to preserve the differences. Once language is gone, then everything will be diminished. So this is what, how, the, uh, how do we uh, uh, make our culture differences disappear is the prime focus of the present Beijing government, I would say. And then uh, I have also mentioned uh, internalization of differences as demonic, especially by Christian. I have uh, highlighted, which uh, I think a lot of uh, talk is heard, so let me not speak because I should uh, not take a lot of time. But uh, I want to read uh, page 6, 7 chapter. With the long years of internalization of inferiority, many Christians, especially indigenous people, are confused. <coughs> many people think that Western culture is Christian culture. Even some educated people think that Western culture is Christian culture. When it comes to Western culture, we do not question. We just accept them as Christian culture, even though some of their teachings and practices are one-sided and have nothing to do with biblical faith. Nothing to do with the Bible. Nothing to do with the biblical teaching. But when we incorporate indigenous cultural elements in worship, we question and resist. Still, I remember uh, in the Eastern Theological College, I prayed in a traditional style, you know, oh, uh, big sound. People were shocked. Even in the Eastern Theological College, where Chinese theology is taught. I thought that I'm bringing back the traditional uh, God, you know. What he is encouraging people to go back to the past. This is what people do. When I sing traditional song, people are critical. Although I'm not a good singer, <laughs> but always I try to sing uh, in the concert, you know, some traditional song or prayer. Whenever I, uh, I talk about tribal theology, but nobody likes, especially by the tribals, including by the you know, not very critical. When I was talking about the tribal it was criticizing me. So, when we incorporate indigenous culture elements, we question them. I posted some pictures on Facebook, very interesting. Rukhai huh? in by one group. Very nice. Ho, 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 no, uh, dancing. And, uh, very nice, uh, you know, may I worship. So I said, one fellow asked me, is this worship or cultural performance? <laughs> So I replied, we had a very meaningful worship. <laughs> the fellow replied, what do you mean? Where is that? <laughs> uh, 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 the fellow replied, no, back end we are worship. When I said, we had a very meaningful worship, the fellow replied, back end. Back in we are pushing. I nearly committed. <laughs> 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 and then 
is a he is a indigenous man. Okay. Today, indigenous people are the first to deny the differences. This is the problem. When we we need to ask ourselves, can we worship God by Western form alone? We need to understand that gospel is different from Western culture. Western culture is not Christian culture. Christian uh, often think that conversion to Christianity means one should abandon the rich traditional culture because they are pagan, evil, and demonic. My father also, uh, in the revival, he beat the drum, you know. He was, he was a devil. So he uh, beating the drum and singing. He was excommunicated from the church for six, three months. <laughs> beating the drum. For singing. In the, you know. <laughs> but we still song, yeah. But he is beating the drum. Why? No, other can do it, but you are a church deacon, you know. You cannot do it. So, Jalap is communicated three months. How can we develop? How can we celebrate with other faiths? How can we expect peace and harmony in this country? This is what I think. Uh, so, our colonial mindset, our mentality, colonial mentality, is the first thing that we need to liberate. But due to this wrong politician, diversity are forgotten and continue to disappear even today. A critical point again is government policies and differences. Of course, in the past, people have assimilated higher social mobility to the uh, higher you know, caste voluntarily because of discrimination because of exclusion isolation but now the present policy of the government and you know, all the you know, uprising movement initiated by the indigenous people they always try to give an economic package. Economic package. Okay. Reservation in the education, reservation in the job, something reservation in the economic package. But you just see, this is a very strategic policy to integrate to the dominant, dominant framework. So that you forget it, yourself. You become one of the dominant. So all the economic packages, reservation policy within the majoritarian framework has to be critical. This is not liberation. They have misunderstood that they are fighting for justice. So this is just an assimilation. Assimilation. Assimilation is that just not justice, but a process of continuing oppression. Our, our marginalized people, tribal people, looking for welfare scheme, economic package, reservation in education, employment, or they are asking for justice. The problem lies. Is it the fault of the vulnerable community or those who stigmatize and exclude them are the problem. Are the problem. Therefore, prominent assum assumption of the notion of justice is to assimilate or integrate into dominant social, political, religious value system. Justice is not assimilation, but recovering, recovering or recovery of our self-respect traditional wisdom, respect of the diversity of cultural values. This is what uh, I want to say. And also I have a paragraph on how globalization, 
market capitalism promote to marketize indigenous culture. Indigenous culture are objectified, commercialized. Well, human beings coming to see human beings. Human beings uh, sell their market uh, culture without any respect, value. You, you study carefully how this market capitalism again further push indigenous culture as having no value but only market. I have uh, studied quite a lot on that, uh, you know, tourism industry in relation to that, but uh, forget it about that. Okay, there is a need to shift from similarity to differences. I wrote that one on the chapter 7, uh, critiquing on the theological methodology. Okay, we have uh, assuming that Western theology is the only way of doing theology. We try to uh, formulate translation method. Still, I remember I was in Hetero Airport. The lady in the immigration, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Calcutta. Oh, you are going to Calcutta? I said, no. I'm going to Calcutta. <laughs> Calcutta? No, you are pronouncing it wrong. I said, when you say Calcutta means bad smell. <laughs> but this is my city. I live there. Millions of people call Calcutta. <laughs> city of joy. She got the lesson. So I said, Thank you for not teaching me how to pronounce my name. <laughs> Otherwise, she will call me, What time? <laughs> I don't want what time. <laughs> this? Do you still want to teach? We think that what the theology that we have done is the right. Our duty is only to translate it. Colonial mind, all through the theological tradition, we have been that one in India. We have been very proud of philosophical uh, way of doing theology. Oh, we have also so many philosophers. Oh, this, this tradition, this tradition. But within the Western framework, that's why I used to tell in that. When we say good theology means to write something which human beings cannot understand. It's good theology, deep theology, critical, systematic. This is what we think. Yeah? We have to talk like that. When I have said to one of my professors, he's died, so let me tell his name also. Dr. <laughs> Chandra. <laughs> it's done what the best world non asian theology. I said, I want to do how indigenous tradition can contribute, can contribute to doing creation theology. He nearly got me. <laughs> how can tribal tradition can contribute to Christian faith? It is another way around. How Christian faith can contribute to tribal life? You should do that one. I also need a department. <laughs> <laughs> so in between, between uh, PC around PC I explained to him, we have, we have a different view. So he said, okay then, if you don't want to work under him, I will guide you. But you please write a paper. Why you want to do this one? Why you want to contribute? A tribal tradition can also contribute. Please write and give me. Another six months he gave me. And at that time, you can uh, one chapter also he said like that. Uh, it's openness. 
that the TC Abraham openness saved my life. Otherwise, I was nearly thrown out in the dustbin. This is the problem. We do not acknowledge. Even in the in theology of college, this is the problem. So I said, good theology means short sentence, moving, touching, every person in this world to understand. Then this is called good scholarship. This is called scholarship. This is the tradition that we have inherited. That's why I have uh, discussed that all our theological paradigm has been to deny the dimension. So, only when you discover the, the tradition, different differences, you can continue. That is my conclusion. And I wanted to, I, I tried to keep a critique on the Dalit and depression theology. We have been doing a lot of tribal theology, Dalit theology, but same, no change. Because, again, we have not done. That's why, unless we do something new, last night I was sharing, in Taiwan, one disabled person was able to create jobs for 99 people and 44 people got part-time job. To do a project, every student graduating student must do a project. That I must uh, create this job for my people, for transformation of the community. Then only they can, they can be rejected. And so, tribal theology, Affirming the diversity, we need to go one step further. Not just talking liberation, but economic enterprise development must become an integral part of Christian theology. Rooted, rooted in the affirmation of diversity. That is the way of it. This is what I try to argue. In this paper. Thank you. I have taken over the topic. So, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bhatti uh, Nongcha. We have about 12 minutes for discussion uh, before the talk is open for uh, questions. May I just add a uh, comment? Well, the, uh, the intolerance towards globality or differences and their uh, uh, a policy of imposing uniformity is typical of the of the missionaries uh, after the uh, nations. Even I think even uh, that began since the Council of Trent uh, in, in the Catholic Church, which, which was part of the Council of Formation. But in the in the early church and also in the Eastern churches, Eastern churches less for being uh, churches in uh, in uh, in, uh, in uh, northeast. For us, Eastern churches means uh, the churches uh, in the Eastern part of the Roman Empire and also in the Persian Empire. Um, then, in the early church, uh, there existed different uh, uh, traditions, theological emphasis, uh, and uh, uh, gradually the Latin and the Greek uh, forms uh, prevailed. And now, uh, there is a tendency among the Europeans uh, to, identify, to divide Christianity into two families, Greek family and uh, uh, Latin family. For example, you might now get about the famous Catholic theo uh, theologian Yves Conga. He was one of the most influential uh, theologians in shaping the ecclesiology of the Second Vatican Council. He said that the, the, the Christian church has two nouns, uh, Latin and uh, Greek. But he uh, he ignored uh, the existence of other traditions. For example, the Israel tradition, so the Israel tradition existed in uh, different forms, and then the Gothic Church uh, in, in Egypt, Ethiopian Church, that is absolutely an Eastern Church, and also it has inherited and retained a large number of tribal elements, for example, dance, uh, drums, uh, 
uh, if you get uh, an opportunity to visit Ethiopia, or you can Google uh, Ethiopian church, the art architecture, the churches are absolutely an indigenous uh, style. And also, the Zurich church, for example, the, the Zurich church was a very important and an active mission in, in China uh, and in Central Asia. They uh, made uh, a, a remarkable examples of, uh, of uh, incarceration. Uh, uh, and I will cite in, uh, an example, uh, not a fact, it's an example. Uh, in South Malaysia, there existed uh, a custom of drinking kumis. Kumis is uh, the fermented male's uh, female horse's milk. It's uh, some sort of uh, uh, beer for them. Okay? So it's an alcoholic drink. And uh, 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 and, uh, the, uh, the uh, Mongols, for example, uh, they used to drink uh, kumis, uh, and they were shamans. And among the shamans, there existed the custom of blessing of the kumis. And large number of uh, Mongols were converted to Sri Christianity. And uh, the Syrian church, the Syrian church, uh, and, uh, uh, composed a prayer for the blessing of kumis. Can you imagine that? Now, a prayer for blessing and uh, something like uh, and, uh, we are, okay, it's a, a simple example. And also, uh, the, the liturgy and Bible uh, and prayers uh, were translated into Chinese language uh, and also to different dialects of Central Asia. That's just a remark. Okay. okay. Now the floor is open for questions. So. Thank you. Well, I, uh, I forget you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, for your very interesting and uh, in, uh, uh, yeah, very interesting paper. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. You will feel slippery with it, so I'm going to keep my drink. So I just spoke. Any critical question from Dr. Arte? No. No, let me just, sir. I appreciate uh, the approach, and though the, the whole content is not yet uh, uh, digested, uh, we have to eat and uh, taste it, and uh, later on we will digest it. But the whole approach, I feel, is very important from uh, sim similarity, oneness to diversity. That. Uh,